Hi, I'm TJ. TJ, yeah. Who do we have here? This is Oscar. Hi, Oscar. And Guapo just kind of let him do his thing, and he'll be okay with you once he smells and sounds. And, uh, sounds good. Does his thing, and he he warms up to you. He's fine. Oh, nice. Eventually, I'm, if this works with Oscar, we'll probably have to do Guapo too. Because if there was a dog right here, uh -huh. awesome. he'd be going off. Yes, okay. he'd be going off. Well, what we'll do is um, you can just kind of take turns with one at a okay. time, and that way, when I bring out a dog, we can actually do both. Okay. Uh, we'll like, we'll do uh, Guapo. All right, that's the name. Guapo first. Guapo. Guapo's the Chihuahua. Oh. This was the one that we've actually got in training this okay. time. Awesome. <laughs> okay. We'll do them first and then Guapo second. But you might be able to see the difference in him when Guapo's around versus when he's not around. Perfect. That would be good to see too. Because um, you know, a lot of times, especially if they're already unsure or a little anxious, yeah. the other dog barking will definitely trigger that too or make it worse if they're excited or not sure. And, and, um, and Guapo, I mean, and then when he starts barking, he does better when Guapo's not around for sure. Okay. That's all right. Um, but um, Guapa's around, um, and that's we had they kind of smell because I had to put them in boarding because uh, we had another puppy come over this weekend, okay. and good. well, we tried to introduce him, and he just he just gets uh, so excited and he starts jumping on him and right. kind of going like this with his mouth, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, did he hurt him? No, I never really intense. gave him a chance. Okay. I never really. It's fine. It's better safe than sorry, and we'll... But like when he runs, like when the puppy runs, he's like right beside him the whole time, trying to, you know... <laughs> I be a little ag aggressive with him, and he won't leave him. We'll use the term intense for now, because okay. we don't know if it... Um, we don't know okay. why he's doing it, yep. if it's of an ill intention, because he might be just... A lot of times they'll do it because they're unsure, sometimes they'll actually do it because they're excited, sometimes they're doing it because they're posturing, Go ahead and grab the first pup for us. Do you have any treats for him? I don't. I'm okay. sorry, I didn't. Hopefully, I still have some. I want to think about that. Oh, that's a little bit of nuts. <laughs> These are some freeze dried salmon. I'll grab some more. See if you put this on? Or? Yeah, you can either okay. put it on, that way you'll have easy access to it. Does he have any allergies? Not that I'm aware of. Great. Hopefully we will find out. And he's very food focused. Perfect. Very. So this focused. will be good. We want him to kind of be able to redirect back and forth to you pretty easily. So if he's having a hard time because he's too excited with the other dog, what we're going to do is utilize time and space. Really extend out the situation so he has plenty of time to get to see them and get adjusted and get less excited or less nervous. And then space wise, we'll kind of kind of close in, let him interact, if he's doing well, if not, let, let him have their own space separate, kind of try to walk along with each other so he gets distracted maybe by other things and just gets used to the other dog's company. And um, the main thing we'll want to try to avoid is face-to-face -face confrontation. Um, dogs do best when they get to meet another dog by the rear because it's less threatening to uh, especially with dogs that are unsure and also for incidents there's a lot less likely for them to start a conflict um, if he's actually just smelling from behind as opposed to being right in front okay. and that can be a little bit tricky sometimes but like I said well that's where we'll kind of just take our time with it and we'll pull them away if we walk back and forth okay okay the other dog he's probably gonna go off okay well no <laughs> yeah okay what we'll do is we'll go that way then uh, do you need to leave it on for AC or anything for him? I can do my car too. He's fine. He's a chihuahua, so he gets, he likes the warm. Okay. I just want to make sure he doesn't jump out or anything oh. too. No. <laughs> I'm not sure how long it'll take. Yeah. I'm not sure how long it'll take, so. I'll roll it Okay. So make sure, so long as there's still airflow in there. There you go. You Yeah, we don't want to
fake them in there or anything too. <laughs> there you go. It's not too hot out of the no. day, but it always gets hotter in cars. Okay. And well, he's a little, he's black, so he's a little different, you know, he's got a... Yeah, and he's brachio too. Uh -huh. Brachio, brachiocephalic. Short nose breed. Oh. Like a well, Frenchie's all, yeah, Bulldogs. I mean, yes. Yeah, all pups are, right. So sometimes it makes it harder for them to, to breathe. Luckily, it's a cool, it's a pretty cool day out. It's got a good breeze. Um, so what I'll do is I'll be kind of on that um, that road with the mailbox okay. and the pine cones, and I'll come out this way, um, and we'll just kind of see how you react, and I'll just kind of give you directions from there. The main thing is just uh, do your best to not do anything at first, because I want to see what you know his reactions like. So don't don't try to calm him back, don't try to calm him down, don't try to stop him, because um, a big part of it too is seeing how long it takes for him to settle down on his own without any input, um, and then afterwards we'll kind of work with him going back and forth. Now, is there a difference? Um doing it out like this versus um, doing it in, in your house. Because once they're inside, that's all they can focus on. So sometimes, especially if they're uncomfortable or if they're aggressive, it's a lot harder to get them to calm down or refocus. Whereas out here, we've got a ton of space to work with and you know, it's a lot easier for them to get distracted by just simple things like people driving up or the smell of the grass, things like that. Um, it just makes the situation easier, but when he does stay over, um, he'll still get reevaluated with the pups that are there too. It'll just kind of be the, the same process, and I'll have that recorded for you when he stays anyway, so you'll get to see. Okay, so you want me to walk over there? Yep. I'll go grab the first pup and I'll meet you out there. Okay. Uh, still kind of friendly, but more barking. Right? 
right, don't be excited. Don't work so far. She'll more so bark at you because she's not sure of people. But if you just ignore her or offer her a drink later, once she's settled down, she'll be fine. But she'll be good because um, she's good with other dogs, but she likes some personal space. It's not as it's not as friendly. And she's very bark. So we'll see if that's something that triggers him or not. Because especially because right now he seems to be perfectly fine, but he's more like he's more neutral. He's like, okay, I'll smell and interest you, but I'm going to walk away. He's not trying to engage in play. He's not holding extended interest. So. I'm probably a little bit nervous myself, <laughs> which I shouldn't be. But... It's okay. Yeah, just try to relax. See, this one just wants to play with him. Yeah. And now you're going to see how his reaction is when he kind of kind of pokes him. You know? so he's very neutral. He's more interested in mom than, than playing and making friends right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... And then I'll switch out. Pups. He's doing good. Well, that's not what happened. I mean, this is what we started out with. <laughs> right. And then when we got him in the house, it was um, his. Yeah, but it's a German short haired pointer uh -huh. puppy. And uh, I could not keep him munching at the puppy. Yeah. And that's another reason why, especially when introducing dogs for the first time, they usually do it outside. And There's a did. lot more space. We did. Yeah. And then we went inside. So it might just be that guarding or protection of his home or his space, because he's very neutral right now. He's not overly friendly, but at the same time, he's not guarded. It doesn't seem like he's guarding mom or anything like that. So it might just be like him not being comfortable yet with the dog in um, his own area. And when, before you guys leave, what I can also do is I can bring him in to see if he has any different reactions with the same dogs that he's gotten to meet. Um, but because it'll also be on different too right um he'll be going into their space as opposed to him going into theirs um and what we could do if there's no reaction is try to meet up <laughs> we gotta we can try to meet up We'll start by just walking by each other casually. Very good. So go ahead. So go ahead and keep walking or try to redirect him. And once he calms down, go ahead and turn around. There you go. Good. Good. Now go ahead and start walking back in. So pretty much whenever he starts to bark and overreact, turn around and make some space, and then when he's good again, we'll calm him down again. We'll go back in. Good. Okay. Yeah, I'll come to you. Very good. Remember, if he's not barking, go ahead and either stay still or push forward. If he starts barking, then make space. Yeah. No. There we go. Okay. There you go. Okay. So now that he's okay again, go ahead and let him bring back in a little bit. And then wait. Okay. All right. And then just circle back in. Yeah, almost. Very good. So now what he'll do is just follow us, and so long as he doesn't bark, try to keep closing the distance. I'll keep. I'll try to keep this one from uh, backtracking. He just wants. No problem. Okay. He just wants to meet everybody, so we're good to go on, on his side. Huh? Oh, chocolate lab. It's okay, you can stay on the sidewalk. Just keep following us. If he starts barking, then just uh, turn around so that way you don't have to keep going back and forth. There you go. Good. Yeah, he 
She's already kind of. Does that mean he's okay or he's not okay? It means he's excitable. He's at anything other than resting, you know? Yeah. So he might be excited because he wants to engage. He might be excited because he's anxious. Not sure yet. But his body language seems to be pretty good. And the fact that he's not, um, he's not fixating. Usually more aggressive behaviors, they'll kind of, they'll bark and they'll lunge and they'll stick on it, and they won't peel as quickly. This one, she just, he just kind of seems uh, unsure, and then he kind of starts up. If you need to take that, you can. Oh, yeah. Good. I'm going to keep trying to get this one because you can kind of see it's that face-to-face -face interaction. If I can get him to smell it from behind, it looks like it'll probably be better. Because if you can notice, every time he kind of looks at him and he looks back at him, that's when he starts barking, right? Like right now, he's good. Right? So just, yeah, so just keep letting him come up behind. And I'll try to keep him facing this way. Like I said, this could be the hard part here. But yeah, just keep letting him... Come up from behind to hopefully smell him while this one's not facing away. Good Perfect. Nope. See, I was afraid he's going to bite me. He's lunging, so. Just slowly, just walk up, it's fine. If he bites, he's going to feel really bad. <laughs> so, part of it is going to be uh, your anxiety, too. Especially if you're pulling back on the leash as if there's a threat or a bad situation. He doesn't know if that's to keep him away or from you or for you to keep him away from the other dog. You know what I mean? So you have to do your best to relax. Okay? We'll have to reset again. Here, what I'll do is I'll trade you. I'll trade you. I'll give you fudge. And yeah, I'll try to figure out. I'm just so worried my dogs are going to bite. It's understandable. It's understandable. I don't want that to happen. Nobody does. Very good. See, he's he's checking back in with you, so he's definitely unsure, but he's excitable, you know. So he's he might be okay, he might not. I'll take your turn to make it easier. There you go. They see his teeth, or he, you can see his teeth. Oh, oh yeah. Hi, sweetie. Hi. See what I mean? This is why you want to stay calm, and then also try to keep. Uh, it'll be hard. I'll do most of the work, but try to do your best to keep him from facing him for now. Because okay. that's only that's the only trigger point for him. You saw there, he went up behind him, perfectly fine, nice and calm. I let him, so there was no tension on the leash. If there's no threat, then we also have to act as if there's no threat. Right there, right. Yeah, I'll keep distance. So. Very good. And sometimes that's all he needs to do, right? Good, there you go. If you need to, you can give him a treat and that'll help keep him focused on you as well. And this has only been about six minutes. And you can kind of see he's already getting more comfortable with his presence being around him. To him. Yeah. He hasn't shown super interest in smelling him or anything too, so still a little apprehensive, so a little unsure, but at least now he's not barking or lunging or snapping at him. And that's another reason why like, sometimes just being in an indoor environment is hard because it's so much more of an intimate space. It's harder to kind of make, it's, it's harder to shrink the circle because the circle's already really small. It's not impossible, you know, and you'll kind of see, I'll, I'll probably do the same when they go in, but uh, it's a lot harder to do. Very good. Perfect. Good. All right. As soon as that front part comes yeah. around, right? He says, well, he's got bigger teeth. <laughs> Very good. He's got bigger teeth. Right? Now, now he just started barking because he heard it. Yeah, that's why I came over now, this, this way. this is what my Right. Doing. Right. <laughs> so now what we'll do, um, trying to think of how the best way to re engage. Um, Is this one yours? He's the other boarding cock. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, there you go.
go. Good. takes a little time and effort. It also takes um, a different mentality slash um, confidence. Right? Like, I'm confident that he's not going to reach for the snap him, so I'm not overreacting, but I'm keeping him at bay as well, you know? And I also know that if I turn him around, he's going to calm down a lot easier because he's not facing the front. So taking things that you know to help out the situation, right? Of course, he's not helping in there. Right, but he's at least still working through it. Very good. There you go. Good. So what I'll let you do is I'll let you swap back with him. Okay. <laughs> Might be a little bit difficult. But, um, he's not paying attention. calm down your other pups again. Put him out for now, but we'll probably have him right back out after we've calmed down the other one. You're going to have your hands full because you're going to be doing two, but it'll be I the know, same exercise. I, I, stopped, I used to walk them together, but they became such a handful, I stopped walking them together. Sometimes that's actually better for their behavior. So especially if he's doing well, but then he's being uncomfortable because the other one is. Yeah. Until at least we can get them both on the same page and both, you know, okay, then it's usually best so that way they don't pick up on the other one's bad behaviors. Unfortunately, good behaviors don't always transfer as easily. The, the bad ones always do. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say always, but most of the time the bad ones transfer a lot easier. Good. So now that they're excited again, do the same thing. Yeah. If he's not barking, just let him go ahead and engage. Good. So he's more just avoiding again still, very neutral. Same with your other pup, except your other pup has more of that problem with the, the face to face, right? Right. <laughs> What's that mean? He wasn't doing that before. Right. He's hamped up now because his brother is, so we're going to just calm him down just like his brother. Right? Because his brother was barking at him, he's like, oh, that's what I do, right? Even though he still feels the same way, he's only doing it because that's what he was actually taught to do, you know, or, or is replicating. Very good. So all we're doing is just rewarding the good behavior of him not barking, and just getting him used to him, used to him again. And then when he's good and not barking, we'll have you try both. It's hard, but not impossible. But what I'll do is I'll I'll give you him, and then you can give me both of your smaller pups. So I'll take the first turn to help you out. And that question: Should they be trained together or is separate? Doing it separate, like we're doing it better. I'm in the two weeks. Um, I would at least have them kind of meet up during, like, have his sibling join us on sessions. But I'll still want to work with them individually just to get them conditioned directing and kind of building up their own stability before you know getting them to do it together but you'll probably need both anyways yeah but i mean if you read it but i mean for these two weeks would it be better to have you have both of them and oh at the same time yeah. i don't know okay. just because i'd be going back and forth with them anyways okay. now like towards the end of his day maybe having his brother stay for like the last two days or something okay. like that would be good and vice versa but um it would, be, it would be difficult to kind of work on the behavior because of the fact that they're both being used to each other up the whole time. Just like that. We, we would have to kind of do what we're doing now. We start off with one, calm them down, add the other one, calm them down, and then do both. He actually, when he was a pup, I had another pug, and uh, the other pug, I never realized pugs were intense, I guess is the word. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he, uh, the other pug would bite into him. Aww. He actually bit my thumb because he turned around and was going after him. my other pug. Oh, I ended up having to give one up away because I could not. I know. I was in tears. Because I had had the old one at me for about five years. And I couldn't get her to accept him. So I had to make a choice. That's difficult. 
that's why I, whenever possible I always recommend that people take their dogs to meet and greet uh, at shelters or fosters or like when they're picking up a new puppy and things like that because we, we think that they might be okay with it they might be okay with other dogs but also there's that personal aspect of it too it happens rarely but it does happen when the dog just really doesn't like a specific maybe other dog she's jealous she's you know, really attached to me yeah maybe she was used to being an oldie dog too well she had oh never mind <laughs> but for some reason he just maybe they just needed more time together it's hard I went ahead and Hopefully she found a good home that uh, oh, she, she can did. kind of We made her. sure of that. We made sure of that. <laughs> That's good. It's always she better. She was in an only dog house. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to force the situation, you yeah. know. And she was just two older ladies that always wanted to hug, so. Oh. Saw pictures of her all dressed up in <laughs> little outfits. So, is your car unlocked? Yes, it is. Okay, so I'll give you fudge, and I'll take your hug here. Okay. And I'll get the other one. Okay. The leash is, um, yeah. Is it still on? It's in the back. No, you'll have to put the leash on him. I tell you, I don't want him to get wrapped up in it while I'm out of the car. Gotcha. Okay. Hopefully I'll, I'll be... You can take his off. I don't know how Waffle's going to react. You, so oh, yeah. I forgot about that part. <laughs> Go ahead, and, uh, here, go ahead and try to grab Guapo, and that way you can hand him to me at least. Okay. Here, we'll trade back. Okay. Hi, babies. You're good. Hi, babies. So see how you're already instinctively kind of pulling him away? Yeah. I would have just let him go in okay. just so we know that okay. they're good. Like I said, <laughs> it's hard. I just don't want anybody to sue me because my dog fits fit them. It's understandable. It's important because we need to process what's going on in the situation instead of being kind of stuck on what could happen. Does that yeah. make sense? You're right. You're right. <laughs> Very oh. good. Come here, Fudge. Good boy. Hot Fudge. That's okay, hold on. Well, I'll, uh, I'll take this one first. We gotta let this one some time to calm down again anyways. <laughs> right? And then he's already again. Yeah, he's only doing it because she, he's doing it, that's all. At least we kind of narrowed that down. Right? Should we do this one first instead of Oscar first? Either way. this way so it'll be easier for him to calm down. We'll go back in the shade over there. That's funny, when they're at the um, boarding, he doesn't react like That's good. Are they all both just like out in open play kind of boarding or are no, they in their own kennels? Yeah.
grab this one part at a time. When I try to kill, keep them in this nice neutral state. And that way when you kill them. Or, oh, wait, I'm grabbing them. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Getting, <laughs> I keep getting excited. Right there. Okay. <laughs> good. There you go. Pretty good. Alright. Come on, little one. This harness looks a little loose, too, by the way. Well, want to be mindful because you can back out of it. Good job. Come on, little one. Here we get your brother. It's okay. Come on. Good boy. If you need to give him treats to help get his attention, he's very treat motivated, so it should be easier. There you go. Good. Right? So he's, when he barks, he looks at him first. He's not even looking at the other dog that he's barking. I'll just follow you and I'll close the distance as they kind of maintain composure. <laughs> Much. And you can go ahead and get in the shade on the sidewalk if you want. This one's definitely pulling, I think, to get to Ma more than anything else. Mom. Oh, watch out for that. Hopefully it is. There is a little bit of like that jungle area over there, or forest area. Maybe it came from there. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. And it's good because there's no follow through too. He's just doing it like he did momentarily, right? Because he's unsure, right? And he's backing up too while he's doing it. And sometimes he goes forward, sometimes he goes sometimes he goes back, right? And he's only hitting whatever's closest to him, like this one over here. So I'm just going to try to take some time to calm him down again. And just keep on walking. Go. No, it was him. And it was just because he turned around. Right? So he's already unsure and trying to pull towards mom or wants to see him, get to him. Right? I'm waiting for him to stop this behavior, like the, the pulling and lunging yeah. to get to him kind of thing. 
and that's how we'll know, you know, if he's even able to switch gears on his own and calm down. Well, it'll take a little bit of time. At least your other pup is actually doing better now in this case, yeah. right? Another reason why, especially if he's feeling this way, yeah. um, being in a, inside is a lot harder because he's kind of getting distracted here and there with the grass. You know, he might have to potty as well, but um, but he's still kind of at least that more of that fixation that we were talking about. You know, it's definitely lingering a lot longer than his brother. Just that space snapping. Yes. And do your best to go ahead since he's close to your uh, right side here yeah. to go ahead and try to pet him and get him to focus on you. Hi, babies. Do you want to sit here? Oh, what? <laughs> you can ask him to sit and wait sit. first here. Come away. There you go. And that's all we want. We want him to just kind of relocate his attention from the other dog back on to at how many German Shepherds actually lack confidence. <laughs> Instead of guarding because they're protecting their family, they're guarding because they're scared of whatever it is. It's like why it's, you know, it's good to take into consideration the dog breed, but I almost like value their, their age and their past experiences more than that. Social upbringing, past traumatic experiences, things like that usually weigh in more of a factor. You know, some some breeds are definitely predispositioned towards certain temperaments, but it, you know, it's not necessarily gonna um, lay down a blueprint for everybody. trade back with you. Actually, I'll, I'll put him in the car. <laughs> oh, okay. Very good. Perfect. All right. All right. And it's important to try to end on a good note, too, during the uh, interaction. Okay. Right? So we went from a low, uh, we recovered, and now they're kind of neutral again when, and not reactive. So that's a good state. A lot of times parents will, you know, end it on that bad note. You know, they, the dog will either be uncomfortable or scared or unsure and they'll snap at a dog because to, they want to make space and then the, the parents move them away and keep them away so it almost conditions them oh if I don't like a dog all I got to do is bark and my mom will keep that dog away right <laughs> this way we, we show them that if they calm down there's nothing to bark at they get a treat get used to being around other pups which is you know like you said they they do well um, in that daycare setting, so it means that they're they are capable. It just probably depends on the abruptness, too, or the intimacy. I think of like the engagements. Oh yeah. Oh wow, <laughs> that's impressive. <laughs> oh. Poor thing.
<laughs> she wants to investigate. <laughs> Sometimes she does well with other pups. Most of the time she's just awkward with people. Gotta throw that away. Alright. Yeah. Good girl. go. Are you interested in saying hi to Miss Lilo? So your goal would be to pretty much just ignore her <laughs> and let the dogs interact. Yeah. Because <laughs> if you say hi to her, that's what she'll be like. Oh my god, it's a person. And she'll start barking at you. Yep. Oh, yeah. Just let her go. Just stay relaxed. All right, so what's going on? They're just smelling each other, right? Hi, how you doing? Good. Very good. Perfect. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. There you go. Good. Yep. yep. It's just smelling, so you're good to go. Come here. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Go ahead and let him do his thing there. Lilo, come here. Good girl. Wave. Okay, all right, I'll let you get the second one. Girl. So we're, we're really working too with a lot of your, um, your support and your conditioning. That'll be another good reason why you'll want to join us on the session. Because it'll be just as important for you to be able to handle the situation and feel comfortable yourself. The good thing is using the more positive interactions you see like this, the less anxious people be. Sometimes that can take a while too. So it's just like with dogs, depends on how many good encounters it'll take for you to actually let go of those anxieties. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, that, and that's why it's hard to gauge, like people always try to ask me for timelines and I try to be as honest as possible when I tell them I have no idea. <laughs> Yeah, he's doing great. Good girl, you know. He almost likes her. Yeah, he really likes this one. He didn't care as much for the puppy. <laughs> Good girl, Lilo. Lilo's like, you have treats in there? <laughs> I'll get you some more treats. Hold on. So that could be another thing, too. He might not like boys as much. He might like girls more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, just ask her to sit. She's sit. pretty gentle. There you go. <laughs> Good girl. Come on. Yeah, she barks at everybody for uh, like, because she's unsure and she gets excited seeing them initially, like with the kids and the people. But once she actually gets comfortable, just like your chihuahua, she's okay. It's unfortunate that she's a bit bigger, <laughs> so it usually ends up scaring people away more. And that's just normal, you know, self-preservation. But yeah, he's definitely showing a lot more noticeable interest in her. So it might just be one of those things too. It just really depends on the pup, but most of the time, uh, you know. Okay. <laughs> Like I've met, unfortunately, a lot of dogs that are more apprehensive towards guys than they are to women. Yep. I've only met like, I think one or two that are actually more afraid of women than men. So that's definitely like an outlier. Yeah, I like that. So now that we know that he's actually not only more neutral slash positive, let's see how much his brother influences that behavior, right? Yep, try to have them both, well, try to have his brother first, and then we'll do both again, yeah. Try to remember to do things in the right <laughs> order.
right? So I'm gonna throw this way, and then I'll meet you down there. That'll give you some time to calm them down. Lilo. Yes, good girl. Right? So you can kind of see how his behavior alone can affect other dogs. Even when they're like neutral to barking before. Lilo. Good girl. It drives them up. Good girl. Come on. We'll let you kind of slowly gain in on us again. Alright, I'll let you go ahead and turn around and follow us again. Oh, Lilo's distracted. That's fine. They're doing well. Yep. Good girl. Good pee pee. Good girl. <laughs> Good pee pee. There you go. <laughs> Thinking about it. There you go. <laughs> so tiny. Yeah. <laughs> 13 years old. Good. So that was good right there, you see? The bark and tucked into you. Good. Come on, Lila, this way. Just let him follow you. And I'll let you kind of keep slowly coming up. Good. Oh yeah, you can come up as so long as, uh, see if they'll want to smell them so long as they're not paying attention. Lilo. <laughs> hey girl. He's like, hold on, mama. I have to pee. <laughs> Good. Very good. There you go. That's okay. It's good practice for him to de escalate, too. I know, you're choking yourself. <laughs> That's, he said, that face-to-face -face confrontation can be really difficult for a dog. What? Can, that face-to-face -face confrontation, really difficult for dogs. <coughs> right? <laughs> I'm letting her react to him, so that way we can just continue the cycle. There you go. Just let him get in. Calm down, let it go. Get amped up, calm down, let it go. <laughs> I 
Oh, she, yeah. Hmm? <laughs> oh, yeah. He says she is uh, very good about letting other pups know and she doesn't turn back down. <laughs> So she's, she's not, uh, right? She's not submissive by any means. If, if this one bit her, she would defend herself. But for the most part, she just plays and corrects dogs. Even like the puppies that annoy her, she'll just correct them. And there's no follow through. <laughs> Like during their uh, intimate engages, we would have a muzzle on and let them free roam and things like that. So that way we could see to extent of what the interactions themselves would be if we didn't intervene to calm down or redirect. Oh yeah, there's um, there's one I'll show you. Hmm? We work with a, a Frenchie as well, and it was kind of the same thing. It's it was a cute little Hannibal Lecter looking like mask but it kind of meshes over their whole face. Yeah. So she's barking at her now instead of the dog, just because she's not used to the, uh, the dress, right? Lilo. Lilo, come on Lilo. Good girl. <laughs> no problem. That's what I mean by her social awkwardness. <laughs> okay, so just be ready to split sideways too if you need to. Yeah, like I did just to be able to keep them apart from one another. This is also where a lot of conflicts between dogs can happen and it's very dependent on their temperament. You know, usually you'll have one dog that is more confident and more dominant and one dog that is more shy and submissive. But if you have two dogs that are dominant, that's where those issues arise because none of them are gonna wanna listen to the other one's corrections and or back down or de-escalate the situation. So they end up kind of amping each other up into kind of that negative spiral because it's not within neither of them to kind of um, concede. <laughs> that's just difference in temperament, but right there, right? So he's triggering and then this one triggered. It's very easy to see, <laughs> right? You're one on the right, the Chihuahua. So she start, he started barking at Lilo and then that one started barking at the Chihuahua. <laughs> it didn't even bark at Lilo. <laughs> yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Good pee pee. <laughs> So at least this time, this one didn't like uh, 
fixate as long or staffy, you know? And kind of disengaged because they were already more comfortable with this dog than the other one. The other one, you can tell they were, they're very neutral, you know? They weren't as engaging, they weren't as friendly. So the, the predisposition towards the other dog too will matter. <laughs> you got a lot of things that, uh, that are going into play here for each of these, just within these two dogs in the same scenario. <laughs> it is. All right, go ahead and turn around and start following me. Come here, Lila. Hey, yeah, girl. Yep. <laughs> Come on, Lila. Yep. <laughs> So now this one can still see, but because that tension isn't there with the face confrontation and the barking, they're a lot more at ease. So his behavior actually is also dependent on the other dog itself. So if you have like an older dog or calmer dog or more submissive dog, he is more likely to be okay. Whereas if you have somebody that's barky or also unsure could be it too it doesn't even have to be like a dominant dog it could be a scared dog that reacts that way because they're unsure they're making space that'll trigger him to be scared too good job okay. so now this one's almost like avoiding the situation while this one's on so definitely more confident and still kind of on that unsure side <laughs> it's it's possible. It definitely took it definitely takes some work, but it's possible. So you know, it's good to know. Do you have any questions for me? I'm running out of <laughs> space. <laughs> yeah. And that way we can get to know him and his behaviors more, help him out. And sometimes it is just a numbers game too, you know? How many dogs can he get comfortable with before he gets comfortable with them overall? And then sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's that anxiety issue where, you know, it doesn't matter if he meets 500 dogs, he meets the next one, he's gonna be just as on the back foot. It just depends on the dog and their personality. Usually, like I said, it depends if they've had a traumatic experience or if they're just shy, lack of socializing when they're younger, things like that. But, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. So they might just be like, even if they're always initially apprehensive, like with her, you can still learn to work with it. You know, you're not gonna ever be like, oh, here's a group of friends, go say hi, kind of deal. You know, you're gonna be like, hi guys. She's gonna need to get used to you one at a time. Teach, it's more like teaching them to compensate for her, but at the same time, you're teaching her not to overreact and to calm down and meet people I too. That's the so. thing. Mm -hmm. When she gets hyped up, yeah. When she gets hyped up. Mm -hmm. Right. And usually, yeah, usually we do that in either two or three different stages. The first stage is going to be building that obedience while desensitizing them and re-socializing as much as possible. The second stage is going to be like really extending their boundaries of pushing them to get uncomfortable so they get used to more uncomfortable situations and not react and then the third stage on top of all that is then correcting when they do overreact because now we've we've built the discipline we've built the socializing they should know now that there is no threat and so now if they act as if there is a threat then you can correct them because if you and that and that in itself can be some work because you don't want to overcorrect because most of the time they're doing it because they're amped up from another dog or scared or something so you just need enough that they it stops that fixation 
so it doesn't take as much time. You're just trying to shrink that time or get them to stop focusing on that thing. And that's what I mean by correction. You know, it just needs to kind of redirect their mind um, and then get them back into that stage one or two part that we worked on. So it's, it's a process. <laughs> And, some do and every dog is different too. Like um, a lot of dogs, they'll be okay with just getting corrected with like a puff of air because it startles them, you know? Other dogs, they'll need the collar. Some, uh, some dogs, they need it up really high. Some dogs get scared from the vibration. It all just depends um, and see how sensitive they are here. <laughs> right, so that might be enough to just like, if he's fixated on something, Pop that, help him redirect and calm down. Let him do it again. He didn't, he didn't, <laughs> he barely recognized it at all. So you can see right there, this, every dog is gonna be very different. She didn't care either. But this one was like, what was that? <laughs> that's, that's almost a good thing and a bad thing because it's, you know, it's easier to set him off because he gets scared, but it's also easier to correct him because you just limit, you just kind of cover that one fear with another fear but you're controlling the other fear. Eventually, we want them to be okay with it and not have any fears, but, you know, that's, that's always hopeful thinking at best. <laughs> well, that was nice meeting you. I appreciate all the help, so we just drop them off. We be in touch before the 21st? Yeah, we'll definitely touch base again, usually, like, the week of. Here, I'll turn this off.